home with Boston College, the Eastern Power, next on the Dave Curry Show. Channel 5 Sports presents an inside look at Bearcat football with University of Cincinnati head football coach Dave Curry. The Dave Curry Show, brought to you by... Pepsi-Cola, General Bottlers of Cincinnati, and by Cincinnati Gas and Electric, the Energy Service Company, and by Central Trust, your financial center, and by Provident Travel, managing travel everywhere under the sun. Pleasant good morning to you, Bearcat fans. It was a great Saturday afternoon at Riverfront Stadium. The Bearcats coming away with a 24-17 victory over Eastern Power Boston College. I'm Red Pitcher, alongside Bearcat football coach Dave Curry, and another victory over another well-known power. Well, it's certainly great to get up this morning and know that uh, we had a fine victory, uh, Red. We're going into a bye, and uh, the Boston College victory is going to do an awful lot for our football program. Well, now you have a victory over Virginia Tech, which was a team that was also victorious in uh, uh, last season in a bowl game, and Cotton Bowl champion Boston College, and you've got the national champion uh, of a few years ago, Penn State, ranked third in the country, coming in in a couple of weeks. Very possibly. It could be uh, rated number one in the nation coming in in two weeks. So, But uh, yesterday's game, we're going to savor a little bit and enjoy, <laughs> uh, I think, uh, today's highlights plus the... Uh, the feeling of getting up over a fine victory. Not only a fine victory, but we had a fine effort yesterday. Indeed it was. It was a great day for football, and as you fans will see now on the highlights, it was an absolutely outstanding football game for the Bearcats. And let's take a look at it. Here's the opening kickoff, Dave, and this has been an outstanding segment of your football team. Well, you start the game off with a lot of pride, and you make a tackle on the 11-yard line. Here's Gerald Ware hustling down, making a big hit. Tom Zabotis was in on that also. This is uh, John Sawyer coming up, holding them for a short gain on a completion. Once again, our defense is on the field and playing hard, and while they may catch a few, uh, there's an incomplete. Again, John Sawyer. We're back on offense now. That's uh, Reggie Tater. We had a triple team there on their nose guard, Mike Ruth. The second play is a boot. Here, Dan goes up top, and uh, we go after a big play here. Jason Stargell incomplete. Now we come back. Uh, with BC on offense, here's a quick screen. And uh, again, we're running to the ball. That's a freshman, Chris Asbeck, making a, uh, a tackle there. Here's a break for you oh, right here. Oh, great play. Delano Kelly coming through. A yeah, big play in our kicking game. Uh, Zabotis is down there. Uh, Terry Archer, big plays. We're back on offense. Here McCoy pitches to Taylor. Watch the little guy scamper in there, breaking two tackles. Uh, this was a big series for us. Here again is Taylor to the right side, and he's down to the one. Now we are on the one-yard line, and they call us for lining up off sides. I'm not sure I've ever <laughs> seen that, uh, but it did frustrate us. That's a terrible place to have a, a penalty. McCoy now comes back. Here's the uh, Al McKinney on a halfback pass. We almost catch the ball. That's Arnez Perry. But we do take the field goal. Defense gave us the ball in field position. We come away with three points have to be feeling pretty good at this point. Boston College uh, really looking for a victory, and their offense, uh, you pretty well shut down in the first half. Well, they go up top here and uh, get a big play. Again, that's John Sawyer. They've got a uh, big explosion uh, with that quarterback. Here they go around the left end, and uh, Ketchings is uh, making a big hit there. I think that's J.H. Caldwell recovering a fum fumble, and Vince Carricker stripped the ball loose. Another big turnover. turnover. Second. Big, uh, McCoy back to pass. Again, this is Incompletion to Greg Latham. Danny was a little nervous early, but boy, did he come back and play uh, well for us. Here's another screen. Look at the people running to the ball here. Now, he may be downfield, but he feels that tackle. That's, again, uh, Richard Rhodes, our strong safety, makes a big hit. Uh, here's a great play by, again, Vince Carricker in the end zone. Uh, he had great recovery here to knock the ball loose. Boston College back to pass again. They certainly did enough of this. Almost Alex Gordon. <laughs> just died when he didn't catch this one. Once again, Boston College back on offense. We've got a lot of defensive highlights because what a day it was for our defense. Again, he catches the ball, but three people on him immediately, and uh, we wanted to gang tackle and make them feel it yesterday, and here's a good effort. Again, Gerald Ware all the way from the backside. Good pressure again on the quarterback. That's something you Look had to do. Look at that tackle, yes. 
Brad Notacker knocks the ball loose, and Alex Gordon makes a big play on a turnover. Gives the ball to UC, and again, McCoy goes to work. He drops back, and look at this to Jason Stargell up top. Jason almost kicks free, but this is a big play. First down for us on the 25-yard line. We do get held, and Baroni goes after a field goal, misses it wide to the right, and this kind of hurt a little bit. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we felt like the defense was turning, getting the turnovers for us. Here they go around the right end. He scoots up field pretty good, and uh, that's Richard Rhodes driving him out of bounds. Look at the goal line down here. Once again, that's Alex Gordon making a big hit. John Sawyer helping out. And they have to settle for a field goal. Fred, I might remind all of us that we've had great defensive efforts down inside the uh, five-yard line. And uh, what an effort by our defense. Three consecutive games with great goal line stands. Here's Joe Heist making a big catch on a hookup. That's McCoy to Heist. Our offensive line coming off the ball here. This is a sweep. Uh, we missed two blocks, and uh, they gang tackle us pretty good. Uh, Boston College was the biggest football team physically we've seen this year. Here's their quarterback back to pass, John Sawyer. John looks like he wants to score here. He reverses his field and goes backside. The junior college transfer is going to learn not to cut back too much, but what a game he has played and what a season he's, he's had. Another big turnover for you sets you up. Look at this catch here, and that's freshman Joe Heist. Breaks the tackle, almost goes all the way. We get a face mask called, and now the ball's down with Reggie Taylor. Look at Reggie going up the middle. I might add Nick Godovac put away uh, their big defensive tackle there. Uh, Rich Childers, they just doubled him up. That's a quarterback sneak after an All-American defensive lineman. Kind of held him in check, got a back. Uh, he had only four tackles, Mike Ruth, yesterday. Well, our offensive line just played exceptional. And as has our defense, there's Tony Ketchings knocking the ball loose. You see a lot of black shirts flying around the field here. They may catch a few, but when they do, they know where they are. Look at that. That's three, four people right around the ball. Again, uh, Holleran's back to pass. He gets a little time here. Let's one, and that's an incomplete pass. Good coverage. Dan McCoy puts his knee down, and we go in at halftime to talk about the importance of the second half. Indeed, it was a great second half for you, too, as we'll get to you in a moment on that. But this game was kind of like Temple. You had some scoring opportunities. The defense was playing extremely well, yet uh, you're only up by seven points. Well, we, we had some big turnovers for us. I thought offensively we missed on three third down situations we should have executed. But again, with the defense playing so hard and regrouping at halftime and ready to go out for a big second half. You had to feel confident offensively, though, because you were moving the ball on BC. I think our players believe they can move the football, yes. Indeed. It, it was a great second half, as we'll see in just a couple of moments when we return after these messages. Cincinnati leads at the intermission 10 to 3, and as we are about to see, the Bearcats go to work offensively in the third quarter, Dave, and it was a great third quarter for Danny McCoyne and the Bearcats offensively, as we see. We do start uh, our third quarter off with a fine drive, and as we'll see here on uh, the highlights, uh, McCoyne starts the ball uh, coming out, throwing right away. There's a fine reception to Greg Latham, and Greg has uh, made some big catches for us, especially in the second half. McCoy in the back to throw, and it's Robert Williams in the flat. Robert has played exceptionally well the last two weeks. Here's Stargell in motion to the left. McCoy hits again. Greg Latham into the end zone for a big, big touchdown. Uh, Reggie Taylor picked up a big blitz there. As their offensive line, you notice McCoy has a lot of time to throw. That's those big hogs up front. They did a great job, uh, both interior lines. That's Nick Godovac, a big sack. Uh, Nick Frank has made a big sack there. <laughs> I got both Knicks going, playing awfully well Saturday. And there's a scramble here, and ouch. No tacker puts a, a ring on that quarterback. He doesn't want to run too much after that. There's three consecutive good defensive plays. Tony catching. What a great play. Tony was mad on Wednesday, and I think he stayed that way all the way through the game. <laughs> Here's a fake punt, and uh, again, a big play. A good coverage here by Vince Carriker. Get the ball back and go right to work offensively. Well, this is a big hook, hook up to Joe Heiss. Uh, uh, McCoy uh, booting to his left. Again, uh, Reggie Taylor. Ah, fake reverse and watch Reggie scamper. This is an exciting football play, and this little guy just makes such a contribution to a football team. McCoy under the center now. We're going back for a pass. Here's a pump. 
And watch this catch. Great leap. Rosie Mukes takes the ball away from the defender. Big touchdown. That's quite a cushion at that point against a good Boston College team. 24 to 3. Well, defensively, we're back on the field again, hustling and running. Once again, they hook up, but we've got three. Watch that tackle. Oh, Tony Catchings, what a great tackle. Best hit of the day right there. Here's a counter play. They get it around the corner, and they go down, and uh, uh, Rhodes makes a big hit, slowing them down a little bit. But Boston College is moving the ball. There's Gerald Ware coming from the outside. Here's a hookup here. That's Alex Gordon. Good open field tackle. Hollering again back to pass. Steps up here. And again, he finds a receiver, Brad Notacker. Brad played so well at the middle linebacker spot. I might add here as uh, we look at this, that's the first touchdown scored on us in eight quarters, two ball games. And uh, we played well again defensively. They got a touchdown here, but now we've got to go back to work. McCoy again drops back. We get a holding penalty here. This is a hookup to Robert Williams, but it moves us back in red. Uh, now we make two crucial mistakes, and we are forced to punt with the defense back in the field. The defense certainly has risen to every opportunity it has. It's forced turnovers, and here's another nice play by Ketchings. Ketchings makes a sack from the backside on a blitz, and uh, what an effort again. We're back on offense now, uh, trying to get something going. This is Al McKinney running a quick screen to the right side. Again, motion to the left, and McCoy is back to pass. Throws it to Greg Latham, and they uh, uh, that was a good call by the official. I didn't like it. It looks a lot better on camera. Here's a flush. This broke our back a little bit because Ketchings running all over the field, and uh, they hook up here and send it down to about the 10-yard line. At this point, the game is still very much anybody. It's 24 to 10, and a whole lot of time left. Well, here they score a touchdown. Watch this. Andre Jackson gets a great hit on him, and he earned that touchdown. But Boston College is back in the game now. You're not conservative with the football either. Well, we worked all week on big plays. Here's Reggie running left. But as you'll see as we come up, we set up a big play, and we just didn't execute it as well as we should. But McCoying here goes to his left, finds Joe Heiss wide open down the sideline, and doesn't get it in there. And that really uh, hurts when you can't execute those big plays. Well, that was a bold play, too, uh, considering the time of the game. You want to get uh, put a people away now where the defense is back on the field. I might add that that's a linebacker, no tacker, that's a defensive lineman, uh, and a safety making a hit. Uh, watch this effort. Here he is. Another defensive back, Gerald Ware, who was responsible well, along with Steve Howard. Steve Howard made the big sack, and that put them back in uh, their backyard. And here, Robert Williams just banging up front, and we're putting them away now. Big, big victory for the uh, Bearcats, and uh, what a fine effort by both sides of the ball, particularly both offense and defensive line. Well, after the game, we had an opportunity to talk to some of the players, and they were undoubtedly pleased as well as the Bearcats win by seven. We've been that way all year a little bit. We've had guys filling in for other guys, and we talk about it all the time. We talk about, hey, we're never going to have probably our 11 best guys out there at the same time, but that's just the nature of this game. So we have, we talk, and we, we try to condition everybody to think that those are situations we have to deal with. We have to play over all those things. We have to go out there and, and uh, put our blinders on, not bother, just get our job done. We, we prepared, yeah, like you said, we was definitely prepared for this game. You know, uh, we did a lot of stuff. And we studied the team, you know. We knew what we wanted to do. We had a game plan, and it turned out to be successful. Yeah, we opened up the second half and came out really strong, scored a couple quick TDs. And we started out pretty good in the first half. We had a couple mistakes that kept us from scoring. But overall, I think we did really well. This offensive line is not as big as last year. That was the big thing. But this offseason, we worked the hardest. We got stronger. And we'll scrape and bite and pinch for everything we can get. And that's what we did today. Well, with that note, Nick Godovac had to be awfully pleased, Coach, because he went against an Outland Trophy candidate, 6'2", 270 pounds, Mike Ruth, who was an outstanding football player, and he not only held his own, he actually won the battle. One of the great stories of the year, and Nick gave him all he wanted, and uh, uh, also our two fine guards, Childress and Rogers, play great games inside. Defensively, it was a great game for the Bearcats, and in a moment, Coach's Clinic. We'll take a look at that defense after we pause for these messages. Bearcats defensively against Boston College enjoyed another fine outing, and 
Dave, the defense has really gelled over the last several ball games, and that includes Miami, Florida. You get Tony Catchings back, and even though you have to patchwork it with uh, guys like No Tacker and Gerald Ware, Delano Kelly yesterday, uh, nonetheless, uh, it's been a great defensive effort. Well, they are. They're fighters, too, and uh, we're going to see a little uh, bit of a preview on our concept of defense, the 4-3 and the 3-4, but we have a bunch of fighters. We've got the coaches clinic coming up, and uh, we'll see that right now with Dave Curry and the defensive package. This clinic deals with the 4-3 defense and the 3-4 defense. Basically, they're similar because they're a seven-man front and 11 people on the field, including the four defensive backs. The 4-3 defense has four down linemen, two ends and two tackles. The 4-3 defense has three linebackers, two outside backers, and one middle backer. The 4-3 defense gives you an advantage with four down linemen in rushing the passer. Good contain by the ends, and then a real strong rush inside with your two tackles. Now the difference between the 4-3 defense and the 34 defense is that you take out one defensive lineman and now you have a nose guard. You take the other defensive lineman and substitute him with a linebacker. So now you have three down linemen and four linebackers. This is the 34 defense. One other defense you hear a lot about is the nickel defense. And what teams do here is they take out a linebacker and they put in another defensive back and call him the nickel man. That nickel defensive back may play outside the weak side or sometimes commonly you see him in the middle of the field. He's the nickel back. Four defensive backs, three defensive linemen, and a nickel back. That's the nickel package. We have some examples here, Dave, that you might be able to point out to the fans. Well, this is our four-man front, our 4-3 defense, and you see our defensive linemen playing games inside, but we do get a four-man rush here. That's uh, Nick Frankel's coming around to the outside, and of course, this was the big sack here by Howard towards the end of the BC game. Four rushers, though, plus bringing an outside backer really creates some pressure for you. That outside backer was Gerald Ware, and he's quite a story as a former safety. Now we look at the 3-4, 34 defense with three down linemen. This is a three-man rush, and while you don't get a lot of pressure sometimes, you have eight people covering for the pass. And as we'll see here uh, on, the, on the highlight, we've got pressure from the outside. And the quarterback does step up and can't find an open receiver, and thus we keep coming after him. That's uh, Andre Jackson, uh, Nick Franco's and J.H. Caldwell, and as you see here, forced the quarterback to overthrow the receiver. Again, though, Rad, you look at 4-3 defenses, 3-4 defense, just remember, it's not where you line up, it's where you end up. Well, the execution has been uh, very good the last couple of weeks. You shut out Louisville, you had eight quarters or seven quarters where you didn't give up uh, a touchdown. It took them eight quarters to get into the end zone. You have to be pleased considering the defense from last year and many of the same people on that D this year. Well, I think uh, our defensive coaching staff uh, has done a great job and I think our players have risen to the occasion and I think our offense has complemented our defense and not turning the ball off. You know, Saturday we didn't have one interception nor did we have one fumble and that really helps plus the defense is getting us the ball and that's why we're winning. Two rookies in that defensive line too, J.H. Caldwell and Chris Asbeck have played extremely well. Well, they're two rookies, two freshmen and uh, they've got a lot of football in front of them. We have something special coming up for you. A lot of old timers who came back yesterday in the 100th anniversary of Bearcat football. That's next. Dave, it was a great day for uh, uh, the Bearcats uh, yesterday, not only with the victory, but just this celebration with the uh, uh, old timers who came back. And we have a chance to visit with a few of them after the game. And even the Bearcat enjoyed it. We're always uh, happy to come back to an event like today where you beat a fine football team like Boston College. I enjoy the university very much, enjoy working in athletics, and uh, with our 100th anniversary today, why we're looking forward to 
uh, more of that to come in the future. There's been uh, just literally thousands of friends from football, both high school and here at college, and uh, we're still associating with each other. They're still uh, participating in university activities, and particularly with my job now with the Dr. Steger, uh, I get to see him a lot, and it's it's uh, it's a, a great feeling for me. It, the most important thing is that, uh, was the type of uh, recruits that we had here at the UC. Uh, uh, most of the guys always been gentlemen, always played very hard, and we were a very close family. Um, those are my fondest memories. It's a kind of a city that, that once you're in here, you're here for life. No matter where you live, San Francisco, we have a little over 2,000 alumni in the uh, San Francisco area and we are pretty active as a group and um, we'll be having a visit by the president Dr. Steger soon and we're getting ready for that so there's uh, it, it lasts forever That's a great final comment isn't it that uh, a man who played for Sid Gilman in the early 50s feels that way about his experience playing football at UC well I had a chance to visit with some of those old timers last night <laughs> they weren't uh, not only great players but they're great people and uh, that's the spirit of UC and what a great time to have a big victory. Well, it was a big victory. The Bearcats winning over Boston College. And we'll be back to wrap her up after this. The win over Boston College gives the Bearcats a 5-4 and four record, an excellent opportunity to have a winning season. And Dave, you've got a week off. What are you going to do with yourself? We're going to recruit, Red. We're going to sell some tickets and get our student body fired up for Penn State in two weeks. And great win, but a big one coming up. Homecoming two weeks ahead and we want you to be there at Riverfront Stadium against Penn State. It's a two o'clock game. We thank you for joining us this week on the Dave Curry Show. Join us again next week. The Dave Curry Show has been brought to you by Pepsi Cola, General Bottlers of Cincinnati, and by Cincinnati Gas and Electric, the Energy Service Company, and by Central Trust, your financial center, and by Provident Travel, Managing travel everywhere under the sun.